warm greetings from CNS. One of the important outcomes of the 70th World Health Assembly held in May 2017 was a firm mandate from governments globally to generate stronger action against non-communicable diseases that account for 70% premature deaths worldwide. Combating NCDs is one of my priorities for the WHO, said Dr. Tredros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, newly elected WHO Director General. The meeting of high-level political forum on sustainable development will be held next month in New York, which will also review the progress made on SDG 3, relate, SDG 3 the goal related to health. Earlier in 2015, over 190 governments had committed themselves to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs, one of which is to reduce premature mortality due to NCDs by 25% by 2025 and by one third by 2030. Are we on track to meet these goals and targets? Are rates and deaths of NCDs declining and declining fast enough? Today's special webinar focuses on how can we generate stronger action against non-communicable diseases. Before we move forward, let me request all participants to please keep sending your questions while the panelists present. No need to wait till the end. Just type your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand, which you will see on your screen. Without any further ado, I welcome today's webinar moderator, Ashok Ramsarup. Ashok Ramsarup is a widely acclaimed international award-winning journalist based in Durban, South Africa, with more than 43 years of rich experience in journalism. He was the senior program producer at South African Broadcasting Corporation, or SABC, as it is more commonly known as. Over to you, Ashok. Greetings from Durban, South Africa. Two out of five deep deaths in South Africa are caused by non-communicable diseases or NCDs. 40% of NCD deaths among men and 29% of NCD deaths, NCD deaths among women were untimely or premature. This is unacceptable as several risk factors of NCDs are preventable, can be mitigated and lives saved. We have luminary panel of experts who will share important insights today. Without any further ado, let me introduce the experts for this session. Christina Parson Perez, Capacity Development Director, NCD Alliance. Dr. Eshan Latif, Senior Advisor, NCD's International Union Against TB and Lung Disease, the Union, and and not forgetting Dr. Rita Banik, a senior educationist and cancer survivor. He is a founder president of Race to Reign in Cancer. For a inspiring leadership in mobilizing cancer, affected communities for improving cancer care. She has won several awards, including Barclays Win Award, Notable Network Award from BNI, Mumbai, and DNA Winners in Life Award, to name a few. Well, let's begin, uh, Dr. Uh, well, let's begin. Christina Parson Perez, Capacity Development Director, NCD's Alliance. Welcome on board, Christina. It's over to you. Hello. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be here uh, today. Um, let me just uh, see. Sorry, where my presentation is. Okay, I've. Uh, I cannot see my presentation here. I will just ask the organizers to, I will start presenting and I will ask to pass the slides, please. Um, so as we have heard, the, the statistics and the numbers are not good. We know that uh, NCDs are the main causes of death and disability worldwide. The main non-communicable diseases as defined by the WHO are cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and chronic respiratory diseases. They share the same four. They share. They, may I ask a 
other presenters to mute themselves, please. And they share the same four modifiable risk factors, and those are physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, the harmful use of alcohol, and tobacco. And moving on to the next slide, please. So the NCD Alliance, who, who are we? We are a, a civil society network. We were founded in 2009, and we uh, were founded by the federations uh, representing those main uh, non-communicable diseases. So we have the International Diabetes Federation, the World Heart Federation, the Union for International Cancer Control, and the, the International Union Against TB and Lung Disease. Now, these represent the four main NCDs, but there are many other non-communicable diseases, uh, mental health, neurological disorders, and you can see there that we have grown to, to, to embrace this. And for instance, Alzheimer's Disease International Federation that has been uh, very involved with the NCD Alliance. And our motto is that we are stronger together. And I think that this really is um, very important with the overall approach to NCDs. It, it involves that we can no longer work in silos. We have to see the, the bigger picture and our shared agenda. And we work uh, to bring together civil society to stimulate advocacy, action, and accountability for NCD prevention and uh, control. Now, I wanted to show you here a, a, a snapshot of the global policy landscape in what NCDs are concerned. In 2011, we had the first UN high-level meeting on NCDs, and this was attended at the level of heads of state, and it resulted in the 2011 political declaration on NCDs that really uh, set the wheels in motion for a global response on, on NCDs. This meeting was important because it makes, it brings the issue of NCDs onto the UN floor. And this is a strong statement of these diseases not being solely health issues, but being acknowledged as development issues. And so in 2011, what we see is a global commitment and acknowledgement of the serious issues posed by these diseases. In 2013, so we have the global commitments set out by the, 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 the high-level meeting. In 2013, we see the roadmap on how are we going to, to, to see action on NCDs. And so in 2013, the WHO produces the Global Action Plan, 2013 to 2020, on NCDs. And this has all of the, the WHO's really technical guidance and the different interventions that member states can use to address NCDs. In 2013 as well, in addition to the roadmap, member states at the World Health Assembly agreed to a, a set of targets on NCDs. And the one that I want to highlight was the one mentioned earlier, which is the, the this is where it was agreed to decrease the premature mortality due to NCDs by 25% by the year 2025. So now we have global commitments, we have roadmap, there are targets. Now, 2014, there was a second high-level meeting on NCDs, and this one is where we start seeing the passing of the baton from global commitment to national action. And so at this meeting here, we started to, to hear uh, about national progress on NCDs and where were member states at. And uh, the, the conclusion really is, is, uh, is, is in the box there that progress, and this is stated in the outcome document that resulted from this high-level meeting, that progress is insufficient and highly uneven um, on NCDs. So in 2014, this high-level meeting resulted in member states agreeing to a set of time-bound commitments, such as establishing national plans, on NCDs, national targets on NCDs, implementing best buys and prevention, and in health system strengthening. And these were time-bound commitments to 2015 and 2016. Um, and I'm very sorry to state here in, in strong words that we're in 2017 and we continue to see the same uh, picture on, on progress, that it, it really is not, not good enough. Uh, so we're seeing a, 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 a lag between global commitments and national action and and progress. 2015 marks a, a very important achievement for NCDs and a really enormous opportunity for us to achieve traction on these diseases. And that is that in 2015, NCDs were included as a target 
in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And so the target there was to reduce by one-third premature NCD mortality and promoting mental health and well-being by the year 2030. So we have now NCDs solidly embedded in the development agenda and a very strong policy commitment to address these diseases. Um, with the opportunity, and in 2017, so this year and now this month of July, countries are going to be reporting back on their progress on the SDGs on a series of, of different goals. One of them is the health goal. And so we're, we really want to see the, 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 the essence of the, of the sustainable development agenda, which really speaks to an agenda that is integrated and indivisible, and NCDs are unique cross cutting issue. So this uh, summer we will uh, hope to see member states starting to, to report how they are addressing non-communicable diseases as part of their sustainable development response Excuse at the me. national level. Yes? Yeah. In 2018, we are expecting the third UN high-level meeting on NCDs, and this for us is extremely important, and we believe it cannot be business as usual. 2018 now means that we are starting. So the first high-level meeting happened in 2011. We saw all that commitment. We know what needs to be done. 2018 now means that we're halfway there. And so 2018, the UN high-level meeting, is really going to serve to uh, report on national progress and what needs to be done to, um, to reach these ambitious global targets. Um, Next slide, please. So, so we understand that, that, that progress is uh, insufficient and uneven um, as the WHO is measuring progress by 2018. In 2015, we had heard that only two countries out of all member states had scored 14 out of a total of 18 fully achieved measures according to, to the indicator set there. So progress is not good enough. So what are some of the challenges that we are seeing on progress on NCDs because in order to, to to uh, discuss what needs to happen. We really need to understand what these major blockages are. So um, we understand that these are weak political commitments. So we need political commitment at the very highest level, and we're not quite seeing that yet. We're seeing that there is still very limited progress in engaging non-health sectors. NCD, NCDs require seeing the bigger picture, and the solutions to NCDs are not going to reside in the health sector alone. This is the opportunity, the enormous opportunity afforded to us by the insertion of NCDs yes. in the development agenda, the sustainable development agenda. We're also seeing, as a major challenge, the lack of financing to address NCDs. Weak health systems that are not, um, that are not ready to to cope with the, 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 the burden posed by, by NCDs, and finally, the undeniable underlying commercial determinants of health, and I'll, 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 I'll speak briefly to, to these. Um, next slide, please. So with regards to political commitment, the if action on NCDs requires thinking about the health sector, but if a lot of the solutions reside in the health sector and beyond the health sector, then we need commitment at the very highest level to ensure this whole of government action on NCDs. And so this means ensuring head of state commitment to NCDs. Um, and, uh, and we believe that uh, having a strong and vibrant civil society um, is another part of the approach to, to NCDs and that will help support us in getting that high-level commitment. At the moment, we know that some heads of state have been vocal on NCDs, the president of Sri Lanka, the president of Uruguay, for instance, who is hosting, who is hosting uh, the global conference on NCDs in Montevideo this October, but we need more. And uh, the president of Uruguay, Tabare Vasquez, also issued a, a call for a group of uh, heads of state uh, champions of, of NCDs to, to come together. So this really needs to happen. So underpinning this is the need for a very strong and vibrant civil society. At the latest count, we knew of 52 national and regional NCD alliances, networks of civil society that bring together different communities and organizations and groups working on NCDs. So breaking those silos, seeing that um, the, that shared agenda, working across diseases, across risk factors, and beyond the health sector. In order to, to, to 
progress action on NCDs, we need to hold decision makers accountable. And I think this is an essential piece in achieving that high level commitment. So these global commitments have happened. We now need to see targets have been agreed to. We now need our decision makers to take action. And um, this involves obviously a very strong and vibrant civil society, but also the media has a very important uh, role to, to play here as well. Um, and my final point here, which really goes at the, the heart of the NCD movement, is we really, this is a, 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 the challenge to us that we need to create a, a sense of urgency around NCDs. Why is it important to address these diseases? Um, and this involves putting people at the very center and heart of the response, putting people first. Up to now, the movement has really remained very technical in its discussions. And we have not seen, to a great extent, uh, people living with NCDs as spokespeople um, actively involved in decision-making processes and their needs and priorities actively reflected. And this is very, very important uh, to change. And we see that as um, an important element to, to lead towards uh, action and progress. Next slide, please. In order to address that last point of, uh, of putting people first and, and really giving the floor to people living with NCDs, the NCD Alliance is launching, um, we have an initiative called Our Views, Our Voices, which really seeks to involve people from all over the world living with a range of different NCDs to share their views, to take action, and to drive change. Um, we are launching a consultation uh, this Friday, and I have the, the, the link there to, to share uh, that with you. But through this uh, initiative, we're looking at consulting with that um, diverse community of people living with NCDs to really understand what are the main challenges faced, what are their main asks of decision makers, and how would people living with NCDs like to be involved in the NCD response. We're looking at arriving at an advocacy agenda of people living with NCDs that we will launch um, in December this year. And the idea is that we would really like to see this advocacy agenda infuse advocacy efforts on NCDs to make sure that those needs and priorities are uh, reflected in, um, in, in, in policies. And the essential piece here is, of course, ensuring the meaningful involvement of people living with NCDs, making sure that opportunities for meaningful involvement are, are offered, uh, that um, individuals are actively taking part in decision-making processes, that, um, that these individuals are equipped with the knowledge and skills that uh, they, they need to uh, take action and, um, and, and lead to change. And that final point of really amplifying the voices and views of people living with NCDs, those spokespeople that are so important to challenge the myths and misconceptions that, that surround NCDs and, uh, and really contribute to individual stigma and discrimination. Um, next slide, please. This is the, the, the next slide just shows you a little um, image there of a community conversation guide that we're going to be launching this Friday um, alongside an online consultation for people living with NCDs. So these community conversations um, guide organizations through a facilitated discussion with people living with NCDs that will then feed into um, the NCD Alliance so that we can arrive at this advocacy agenda of people living with NCD. So we really encourage organizations and individuals to take part in this consultation, to have their voices and views heard. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, this this really goes at the heart of the of, of the NCD response, and this is that we we've seen really limited progress in engaging non health sectors. Um, and there, there's the, the, I think we need to acknowledge as well that the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development is, is very new still. Countries are at the stage of planning their national sustainable development responses. So there's a huge opportunity there for NCDs to be, um, to be at the, at the center and, and address this part of these responses. So there's a whole series of, of materials and resources on how to engage other sectors beyond health, some great fact sheets produced by the WHO and the UNDP on how to address different ministries. Um, we have some, some information there. That's just a diagram on, on how NCDs are cross-cutting across the different 
sustainable development goals um, and how we can uh, progress on other goals by addressing NCDs as well. So that idea of the shared agenda. Um, May I mention here that the, the high-level political forum, that's the main body to monitor and review progress against the Sustainable Development Agenda, is taking place this summer, 10th to 19th of July, in New York. Um, different countries are submitting voluntary, um, voluntary uh, reviews. And uh, these uh, are, are being compiled in a repository online. Um, and uh, if you'd like to see where your country, if your country is uh, uh, reporting back on uh, their progress on um, the Sustainable Development Agenda, check there. This year is a particularly important year because the High Level Political Forum selects different goals for countries to voluntarily report back. And this year, the goal on uh, health and well-being is one of the goals being addressed, as is the goal on you know, poverty, on ending hunger, gender equity, all goals that are highly, highly relevant to NCDs. So please check out that online platform for the High Level Political Forum to look up the, your country's voluntary, um, voluntary reports. Next slide, please. The so if the first UN high-level meeting was about uh, acknowledging the, the problem of NCDs and to, and to state commitment and intent towards addressing these, we believe that now for the 2018 meeting, we should be at a position where we need to be actively discussing how our NCD is going to get funded because we hear recurrently about the lack of financing for NCDs. Um, in this slide here, you can see a couple of uh, of, of, of a very uh, disheartening um, fact, basically, that out of the total uh, money for development assistance for health in 2016, only 1.7% went to the different NCDs, including mental health. Um, and we know that the burden is, 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 is tremendous and does not reflect, uh, and, and this does not reflect that in the slightest. Um, there was a small increase from 2010 to 2016 of funding for NCDs of the Development Assistance for Health, but still um, this remains the area with the smallest amount of funding by far compared to other areas. So there's a discussion to be had there of why this, why this mismatch. Now we know that uh, we can uh, raise funds for NCDs with uh, domestic resources as well as talk about a bilateral, multilateral support, the role of the private sector, the role of philanthropies. We at the NCD Alliance are calling for a financing conference on NCDs to take place next year. And we would like to see that financing conference to be an actual part of that 2018 UN high level meeting process because we believe it is time now to start talking very concretely about what are different countries doing um, and, and different um, key players in the financing space doing on NCDs and for us to share those uh, best practices so that we can start changing the current landscape. We're hearing that the WHO is producing a global investment framework that will include the cost of action, cost of inaction, and return on investment of different um, interventions for NCDs. This would be tremendously useful for such a conference and for the work of different countries as they progress. And we're hearing of really a tremendous need for support and technical assistance on the taxation of unhealthy commodities. Next slide, please. Um, now, another of the challenges that we are seeing are just weak health systems. We understand that to address NCDs, we need a whole uh, restructuring of health systems to move from acute care to, to, to chronic uh, care, to, to community-based care at, the, at, at primary care level. Um, and we believe that at the heart of addressing NCDs is, um, is countries, um, countries taking on universal health coverage. We believe in integrating cost-effective NCD interventions into the universal health coverage packages that countries are putting together. Again, support and technical assistance from key um, agencies here is uh, critical. The word on the streets is also all about integration and how we can integrate NCD interventions into existing uh, platforms. I have bolded there in that slide cost-effective NCD interventions because um, just now this May at the World Health Assembly, the 
the, a set of interventions that are included in the WHO's Global Action Plan were reviewed and a cost-effective analysis added to them. So there is very, very specific technical guidance on what works for NCDs and already the beginning of these cost-effective analysis. So there's a fantastic menu of options for countries to take on. Next and final slide, please. And I was saying it's inevitable. We cannot talk about NCDs and progress on NCDs without talking about the underlying commercial determinants of health. And that is that there are, we need to acknowledge that there are private sector commercial interests that are detrimental to public health. And a quote there from 2013 from the WHO Director General at the time, Margaret Chan, that still stands today that efforts to prevent NCDs go against business interests of very powerful economic operators. So we know of industry interference. Um, we understand that it's extremely important that we protect policy making from commercial interests, that we are actively addressing conflict of interest situations, and there is a desperate need for increased guidance and support to countries to navigate through this situation uh, where there might be, a, where there is commitment to uh, improve health and address NCDs. However, the opposition and the barriers uh, posed by these very strong commercial interests are serious hindrances to progress. Um, I hope this was a uh, useful, uh, the, the, the snapshot of the, the main challenges on NCDs. I believe we have a tremendous opportunity with the 2018 UN high-level meeting on NCDs taking place next year. We would like to see high-level participation of heads of state, and uh, we believe it cannot be business as usual. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was Christina parsons Perez, Capacity Development Director NCD Alliance. Well, you set the perfect stage to invite our analyst and senior tobacco control leader, Dr. Eshan Latif, who is now the senior advisor on NCDs at the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union. Welcome to you, Dr. Eshan Latif. It's over to you. Thank you, Ashok. Uh... I think I'll start where Christina left off, uh, and I will try to avoid any uh, duplication with what has already been said uh, in order to save some time for questions at the end. The, the importance for us moving ahead would be to really link the high-level discussions which are happening to in-country work. And I know it's easy for us to say that we have passed on the baton to the governments now, but once you pass on a baton, you need to ensure that the runner who's going to run with it for the next 100 meters has the capacity to do it and also has the skills and the infrastructure to do it. They need to follow a lane. And as such, having the experience of working with governments over the last 20 years now, what we realize is that Till the governments have the right infrastructure, the right personnel, the right people guiding the things which need to happen, we will not see much traction. The political commitment will be there, but that capacity to develop those national action plans is a must. Now, how, where do we go from here? How do we address all of this? So we need to have sustained political commitment. That, that's a given. What we also need to see is that how do the governments prioritize what is cost effective and what is needed on the ground. So let me give you an example here that for NCDs, you have this ongoing care uh, under the health systems for people already who have heart conditions, diabetes, hypertension, they are obese and all those lifestyle choices. So the, we need to have a continuing ongoing care. But the more important bit is how do we prevent the next generations from suffering from these diseases and how do we look at the preventive care? Now the big elephant in the room is all the industries behind the NCD risk factors. Tobacco, alcohol, unhealthy food, sugary drinks, and you name it and all the things are there. Now. 
given the experience that the organizations have collected, I see the NCD movement somewhere where tobacco control, we needed to decide on how to tackle all of this. And where do we kind of ourselves and position ourselves? We do not really need to reinvent the wheel because there is already a format available and lessons learned under tobacco control. And lessons learned is that you need to deal with these industries head on. Now, be different from tobacco control as they have a place in our daily lives. But some of the, th the commonalities. Can you still hear me? Because I'm getting a uh, notice okay. saying. Yes, doctor, I can hear you loud and clear. Difficulties? Hi, can you hear me, Ashok? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear, doctor. OK, sorry about that. So what we need to do is that we need to address the risk factors for NCDs as an urgent thing. But to do that, we need to increase the capacity of our NCD alliances, not the global NCD alliance. They are pretty well set to do, to do the work that they are doing, but the national NCD alliances. And from the very start, ask them and make it happen that they are broad-based. They involve non-health sector people organizations as well. And they have, are raising the right voices uh, to tackle the NCDs and to take on the industries which are trying to dilute the efforts on the ground. We can learn from tobacco. We can learn from the way school health education programs were run in the early years. And not to follow the same lines for NCDs, we do not need targeted interventions at children. Uh, they work uh, in some areas, but you need to have a clear evaluation plan on how those are working. So we need to target the advertising campaigns of all these industries. Uh, and also, we need to raise local resources by taxing this, uh, these products. Now, now, that is not a very popular uh, move, both with the industries and the governments. But we need to build up our base. We need to build up the argument that that is the most effective way of moving forward. So for me, in terms of moving forward with the NCDs, uh, local agenda, national health plans, you need to link the work which is being done at the high level, like those discussion at the high level meetings, and translate that into action at the local and national level. You need to ask the governments to set up structures, not on the curative side of NCDs, but also on the preventive side by opening NCD cells within the ministries, who can be the coordinating points and are responsible for developing the NCD national action plans, national laws which need to be amended to suit the, so that we can achieve the targets under the NCDs, and have a dedicated team for which resources are available. And then you can look at the taxation system of the country and raise taxes on all these unhealthy products which are out there in the market, very cheaply available, and raise the resources by setting up health promotion foundations. I know some countries do not like the uh, nomenclature or the connotations attached with the health promotion foundation, but you can find your own word. And the union is always recommended that these texts, there should be resources available nationally uh, to take on and develop and implement these national action plans. Now, one of the other uh, factors which is really important is that they, the national governments need our technical support. So organizations like the NCD Alliance, WHO, other UN bodies, World Bank, uh, organizations like the Union and others who are involved with World Heart Federation, the World Lung Foundations and others, who are already involved with the different structures, um, cancer societies, they need to provide the technical assistance to the governments. 
let's not assume that the governments, the governments have shown their political commitment that they will go on to develop the national action plans and will be able to implement it. They need our support and we should be there. Uh, we have learned, the union has learned this through its work on tuberculosis, uh, on how while there is no industry behind stopping us to work on tuberculosis, tuberculosis continues to pose a challenge uh, for all of us, for all everybody involved in public health and also the medical professionals. Similarly is tobacco control. When we started working on tobacco control, the governments were committed, but there were a lot of factors. For example, you pass a smoke-free law, how do you implement it? So that the results and the benefits reach the local people and the beneficiaries are the people that we want to work with. And similarly for NCDs, that technical assistance to the governments is crucial. We don't need to provide them with the financial resources, but we should be in there looking at their national action plans, what is the need on the ground, and how can we help. Another major ma basic step that we need to do is to do, do some needs assessment, because every country comes with its own set of challenges. In some countries, there will be no political commitment, so you need to start on raising that political commitment. In some countries, there will be no data available. So where do we get the data? Do we need to start doing our own surveys or can we use the National Health Service to get the best possible data, credible data, which we can use to convince the policy makers to develop their policies. So that needs assessment on the ground, needs technical assistance. And that can be provided, as I said earlier, by international organizations and national organizations. So overall, uh, resources uh, needed can be done through taxation of the products. Tobacco taxes are already underway. We can add all the other taxes on the other uh, commodities which come under alcohol, sugary drinks, uh, unhealthy foods, and then take it from there. And once we have set up these infrastructures, we will hopefully see some traction on the ground. Ashok, I'll stop there because I would like to answer, right. uh, look at some of the questions uh, which might sure. come up. So thank you for giving me the opportunity and thank you to CNS, the union, and everybody else involved uh, in making this webinar possible, which I think is really, really important at this stage. Thank, thank you, doctor. That was Dr. Ashan Latif, senior advisor, NCD's International Union Against TB and Lung Disease, the union. Well, moving on, before we open the question and answer session, let us now listen to one of the most potent and important voices of the voiceless today, of Dr. Rita Banik, a brave and courageous woman who has battled cancer. And despite her struggles, she is standing up to mobilize people for greater action on improving cancer care. Welcome, doctor. It's over to you. And we salute you as well. It's over to you, doctor. Lost you. I lost you, doctor. Uh, Dr. Rita Bani, can you hear us? Dr. Bani, can you hear us? I think I think we lost Dr. Yes, yes. So uh, we can move on from here, and maybe if she comes online again, then we, we will put her on the webinar. Great, great, great uh, Madam G. Well, participants, uh, please keep sending your questions uh, using chat function or raise your virtual hand on the webinar screen. It's now over to open session begins now, and it's over to our Madam G. Uh, uh, thank you, Ashok. Uh, and as Ashok said, I would request participants to please keep sending your questions using the chat function or raise your virtual hand on the webinar screen. We begin the question and answer session. We already have a lot many questions with us and we hope more will keep on coming in. 
uh, and again I am say, uh, just uh, saying it for the benefit of Rita if she can hear us that as soon as she is able to get online she could please start and we will stop the question and answer session in between and give her a chance to speak because she is one from the community who has been battling cancer and still doing a lot of work for cancer survivors. Uh, we have a question from Kalchisa Abeta from Ethiopia. Uh, Abeta says to tackle the burden of NCDs, physical activity is critical. Why are physical activity programs not prioritized in government policies, especially in low and middle income countries, uh, with special reference to Africa? Uh, would the panelists please like to answer this? I can uh, give it a go. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, please. Yeah, again, it goes to the point I was making earlier that we need to have those infrastructures. For example, we advocate walking to our work every day. But in countries where are there are no walkways, no paths, no footpaths for the people to walk on, and there is so much pollution on the ground that you would get all kinds of uh, inhalants once, once you try that walking. Uh, it becomes very difficult to advocate walking and, and physical exercise. So opening up of gyms, opening up of different other structures which can benefit the people. And remember, this is, this is not a cost, high cost activity. You can do it at your home. You can do it. You don't need the government uh, telling you what to do. It is common sense and you should be able to do it. You know, walk in the evening, do some exercise. St don't sit down all nine to five in your office. So do the little things. You don't need to start big for everything. Do the little things that you can and hopefully you'll turn yourself into a more healthy person. Look inside, look inwards. Uh, thank you, Dr. Latif. And in fact, it brings us naturally to another, to the next question. A journalist from Swaziland wants to know, uh, as Christina had mentioned about engaging non-health sectors uh, in uh, controlling NCDs, and also Dr. Latif had said how to prevent NCDs in next generation. Uh, so what are the non-health sectors basically we would like to engage with? Christina. Hi, I can I can start on I can start on that and I'm going to take the example of physical activity because I think like Dr. Latif said that this really speaks to the need for these structures to be um, structures to be in place in government so that you can talk about these solutions that um, that involve the health sector but really involve involve other sectors as well. So if we're talking about physical activity we need to talk about, uh, you know, the, the Ministry of, of Education, so physical activity programs in, in schools, for instance. We need to be talking to the Ministry of, of Transport. We need to be talking about um, active transport, so, for instance, creating uh, lanes for people to be able to, to cycle safely. Um, still on the, the subject of physical activity, we really need to talk about uh, safety on the streets. Maybe it's not even safe for people to be uh, to be outside or, or, or matters of, of gender equity where there might be some cultural norms where, where women don't feel uh, confident to be uh, engaging in physical activity. So the, the, the question of the, of the non-health sectors really regards all the different uh, ministries that we see in in government, and so I was just mentioning you know, education, transport, but also uh, trade, finance, uh, just, to, just to offer you some there. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Rebecca Hamill uh, from, of Georgetown Resource Mobilization. Uh, Rebecca wants to know, where are we regarding resources and funding to meet the 2030 NCD goals? And uh, Christina did present a very a uh, dismal picture of that saying that only 1% of the DH was allotted to NCDs in 2016. Um, Christina, I'm keen to know which, sec which health sector got the maximum funding. And also, back to Rebecca's question, how can countries, donors, and partners prioritize the available funding to meet these goals? Um, Dr. Latif, uh, I'm sure you'll have a lot a lot to add on this 
on this question. Um, so, so this question really is, you know, where, where, where is the money? <laughs> where is the money? And I'm afraid it is true. The picture is dismal. There is very, very little funding being allocated to, to NCDs. And what we're seeing is, is that real disconnect between the burden of NCDs and the funding allocated to um, address them. So uh, I'm just going to make a couple of points here, and I'm sure that Dr. Lateef can, can add more um, to them. Um, one, one point I'd like to make is the, the, the principles of aid effectiveness, and this involves um, donors really listening to what countries are saying is important to them and what they need. So making the case on NCDs, and I think that we can go much further in making that voice louder. So um, countries stating, um, countries including NCDs in their um, national development plans and including NCDs into their UN development assistance frameworks, because these are one of the things that are being presented, for example, to the UN system to receive assistance on. Um, I know that there is some work ongoing, the WHO and UNDP, on supporting countries with developing national investment cases. And this requires a, 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 quite a lot of expertise. And as Dr. Uh, Latif was saying, you know, there's a lot to be done with supporting countries in their response. And one of the things with these national investment cases is to have a solid, um, a solid understanding of how much NCDs are costing the country, but also what the cost for action is and the return on investment on different interventions. And with that, kind of presenting it to the, the donor community. So I feel that there is a real disconnect. I think the voices of, uh, of, of countries need to be louder in demanding funding for NCDs. But I also feel that the donors, multilaterals, bilaterals, really need to start listening as well, because we're not seeing a match, a match uh, there. Thank you, Christina. Uh, there is a question from Shailesh Shubhayat. Uh, Shailesh wants to know that climate change would play an important role in aggravating NCDs. Uh, what would be your suggestions to engage climate change stakeholders in NCD-related advocacy? I think both our panelists would have something to say to that. Yeah, sure, but it's a huge potential uh, of bringing in the environment because that is already confirmed on how the environment is affecting our Earth and our future, uh, for the future generations as well. What we need to do is to have broad-based NCD alliances, and Christina referred to them earlier, that these alliances are key for our work in, in a national setting. So what we need to do is, if we have those broad-based NCD alliances, everybody can pull in together the expertise that they have and carry the same message to the policy makers. And just to dwell on the uh, question raised early on resources, National action plans, national policies determine what kind of resources are going to be made available to you. So if, you're, if a country has a clear-cut plan for the next five to ten years and they know how to reach them, funders would be very open to funding these programs. But if you just say that we are going to reach the 2030 goal or 2025 goal set out in different documents, whether it's SDGs or MDGs or the NCD plan, you need to show how you are going to get there. And that how gets you the funding. And unfortunately, this, uh, these resources and funding is a two-way street. So you need to meet them halfway of telling them, how do you intend to do it? And what is your prioritization? So do you want to work through the environmental sector? Uh, or do you want to go through the health route? Do you want to have a broad-based uh, coalition who uh, gets the funding. So you need to be clear in your own mind on what the national priorities are and how the nations are dealing with it. And that gets you the funding. And the same answer goes for the environment thing, that they need to be involved in a broad-based coalitions on the ground to get the maximum out of it. Thank you. Hi, Christina, could, could, would could you I like add? 
Yes, yes, yes please. please. I think that's a great question. Thank you for for asking it regarding uh, climate change. And uh, I think uh, picking up the point from, from Dr. Latif, I think it's all about um, going beyond the usual suspect. And I would say that climate change is really kind of going beyond the usual suspect. And uh, so again, you know, that kind of bigger picture, looking beyond health. And so I would, um, I think what, certainly what, what, what we believe is, is in win-win solutions. And uh, one example, two examples here, uh, one on you know, active transport. So physical activity, that is good for uh, decreasing the, the risk of, of NCDs, but also from a climate change perspective, this also means that uh, people are less dependent of uh, cars and fossil fuels and so on. So that's one win-win solution. Another one is really speaking directly to um, air pollution. Again, you know, a serious, uh, uh, as a risk factor for uh, NCDs, and uh, certainly coming from, uh, you know, so 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 we have here uh, the union, and uh, from from um, from chronic respiratory disease perspective, you know, that really real importance of addressing air pollution, and of course, again, this also goes towards our dependency on fossil fuels and uh, discussions regarding climate change. So so it's all about engaging other stakeholders and being quite. Um, and really focusing on on the on the messaging and that shared agenda, those win win solutions, and 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 I feel that for international organizations and for um, several, I think for several organizations out there, I think that there's a huge role for um, to really be collecting kind of case studies of what is happening nationally, what we know works, but to to provide some support in those common messages that can be used to engage other other stakeholders. Uh, thank you, Christina. Uh, we have a question from Govind Kumar Tripathi of the International Union Against TB and Lung Disease in Delhi. Uh, Govind wants to know, how can NCT's program implementation be synergized with other plexi programs in the field? Uh, we have a similar question from Dr. Archana Trivedi, who says that India's NCT program, which is formally called the NPC-DCS program, is very weak as of now. How can we strengthen and improve it? Uh, Dr. Latif, would you like to say something on that? And uh, I too would like to uh, add a question to that, because the NCT program and the tobacco control program and the aging program, they all come under the national health mission operationally and the nodal officer is the same. And very often in, in some cases we have seen the nodal officer is not aware even of that uh, he or she is responsible for the NCD program as well. So where are we going wrong? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we need to go back in the history of public health and remind ourselves that vertical programs do not work. They have to be cross-cutting. You do not need to reinvent the wheel for everything. So for example, if you need data on NCDs, you don't need to start doing your own survey. What you need to do is to incorporate those questions in your own demographic and health surveys. So you get the answers. So one way of incorporating NCDs into the national health uh, system, which is already working, is to pick out the different components and start looking at what is already available. So if you have a nodal officer, do you need to raise the capacity of the nodal officer to understand what needs to be done under NCDs? If you have a health system which decides on essential medicines, that forum needs to be approached to make sure that all the medicines which are required for NCDs are under the, NC the essential drug list of that country. So there are systems already in place. The health systems are working. There are other industries, like the other ministries who deal with the industries. There are finance ministries. So you need to match these together so that it becomes a fuller picture like a jigsaw. So you keep putting those pieces together and come up with all those integration plans. People have done it before for other uh, health programs like the Lady Health Work Workers Program started off as 
one dealing with uh, neonatal care and the obstet obstetric side of things. But then it increased to immunization and all the childhood immunization and polio immunization campaigns were built into it. Then it started detecting early detection systems. So we were kind of already working with people sensitized and asking them to do a bit more while making sure that they are not overburdened. So that kind of capacity is there on the ground. It's up to us to find the right avenue and then plug into it. Thank you. Um, can our panelists uh, give us three main action points that government should take to control the rising tide of NCDs? Maybe it would be a summing up of what you all have said, but just maybe three main action points from each of the panelists can we have. Christina, you want to give it a go or should I? Go for it. <laughs> yes, I'm, 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 tied, I'm tidying my thoughts. Um, so so three, three action points. I would, um, okay, my, my, my three top ones would be the first one is high-level political commitment. We have the opportunity coming in 2018, the UN high-level meeting on NCDs for um, that high-level presence to showcase what countries are doing, but also to share what isn't working and to discuss what more needs to be done. So that high level political commitment uh, is, is something that is that is necessary. And uh, as we have so many members of the media on the on the webinar today, the essential role of uh, that media can play there as well in mobilizing public demand. Um, the other two points that I would mention are really just points that really go to the the heart of NCDs and the NCD response. And the first one is the need for a whole of government response. And there's been so much discussed here today about that, about the, the need of having structures and, and mechanisms that allow for those uh, health issues to be discussed um, across different uh, ministries and across the whole of, of government. Um, my final point, which again goes to the heart of the NCD response, is the need for whole of society. So I think that any uh, discussions around NCDs and any decision making, um, we need to have people living with NCDs put right at the heart and center of it. And also, and this, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from civil society here, I think civil society has a tremendous role to play. So um, there are organizations, networks in country that have tremendous value to add in advocating and holding decision makers accountable and raising awareness on NCDs and I think that they absolutely need the, the floor and the opportunity as well to be involved in decision making. So political commitment, whole of government approach and whole of society approach. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from uh, Dr. Sophia Thomas uh, from India. Uh, she wants to know why is mental health often considered separately and not in association with other NCDs such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes and some cancers. For example, depression and cardiovascular disease have strong linkages. But most cardiovascular disease patients are advised to improve on their lifestyle conditions. Uh, everything related to physical health and very little thought is given to the mental health. So what is your opinion regarding promotion of mental health and well-being uh, as part of the NCT program? Uh, Shobha, uh, that's a very important question. And again, it goes back to what Christina and I were saying earlier is you need to assess what stage your national policies are and what is being done for uh, mental health and well-being in your country. You need to remove all those taboos. The other uh, risk, the other uh, disease conditions like cardiovascular cancers are more developed and people talk about it. But even with uh, diseases uh, under cancers, some of them are difficult to discuss in the settings and we see those cases every now and then where people are shy in approaching uh, doctors and the medical profession because of the cultural uh, circumstances in that country. So again, remove those taboos. Mental health is an important program and a 
very very vital part of the NCDs because they can affect your whole well-being uh, uh, when you are when you are living with certain conditions. So I'm all for in support or and we should never consider these uh, mental well-being away from mental well health being away from the NCDs. Part and parcel of the whole program and they should be tailored into the whole debate. Nobody should consider them as being the outsiders. And just very quickly, the three points that I have in summation, Shobha and Ashok are national action plans for the next five to 10 years, whichever fits in well with your national circumstances. Please increase taxes in your countries to raise resources, but also to decrease the consumption of all these unhealthy food, sugary drinks, alcohol, and tobacco. And the third, and the, which is very close to me, is decide on how we are going to deal with the industries behind those risk factors. Because that would give the civil society some kind of an idea on how to deal with it. Uh, we, I don't think countries have started thinking about it. For tobacco, we are very clear under the FCTC article 5.3, which says tobacco industry has got no role in public health policy development. Do we go that strongly and do we limit their advertising campaigns? But it's for countries to decide what is best for the national environment. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lati. Yes, uh, anything else? Did I, did I stop you in between? Uh, no, no, no. Thank you, Shova. Okay. We have not many questions on cancer pouring in. Uh, we have a question from Maria. Uh, Dolores Julian from Spain. Uh, Maria wants to know what is the role of health education and improved health assistance in prevention, care and control of ovarian and cancer of the cervix? Uh, how can they be integrated in countries programs? Then Rahul Devedi from India wants to know what needs to be done to rein in oral cancer, which is becoming very widespread in a country like India. Uh, we have a question from Alfred from Rwanda who wants to know that why is there more focus on palliative care, cancer care in Africa instead of focusing on early detection and disease management. So would uh, any of the, the panelists like to answer these questions? I can give it a go Shobha. Uh, yes. I'm a fan of uh, health education but only if it is properly evaluated. So you do your health education programs, which are expensive. You do your mass media campaigns, but you need to evaluate on what messages you are sending out there and what seems to work. Till you have that evaluation plan, one way traffic of health education does not work. That's, that's my personal experience. Some people might like to differ from it, but <coughs> Education is really, really important. But what we learned in tobacco control is you can have a very educated, well-versed smoker who knows all the diseases caused by tobacco smoke, yet continue to be addicted to a substance which is very highly addictive. So health education for all kinds of cancers, for all the risk factors, what it does to your body, really, really important and should be undertaken. And again, how do you finance them? Finance them through your national media, finance them through your national budgets and finance them through the taxation that you impose on these products. So again, look at the conditions in your own country and then incorporate them into one big health education. So why can't we have a law in our country saying X percentage of the national media will be devoted to health education of the people. Why can't we tell the private sector to do more on health education? So again, rope in those resources and then build in your health education with a proper evaluation plan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lati. Very, very well. Yes, please do. Yes. Hi, I would like to yes. um, add a point uh, there, uh, just picking up on the on the palliative care um, question, um, and this uh, it's a little bit like a talk. 
no one left behind. With regards to palliative care, I think it's important to talk about NCDs in their continuum. Now, I I think so. So we we, we believe this. So talking about prevention and control of of NCD, so not talking about uh, uh, palliative care instead of of other uh, of focusing on prevention, for instance, we we don't feel that's the type of uh, of, of approach here. The uh, so doing one and 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 not the other, we absolutely feel that palliative care is an essential part of the NCD response. Um, and the thing that is, uh, I think, the opportunity in palliative care is is actually framing the NCD response as a, a very, uh, it, that really, it goes to the core of, uh, of human rights um, and, and that uh, right, rights-based approach to, to health. And, uh, and, uh, I, and I, I certainly believe very passionately about this and, uh, and I know that the NCD Alliance has done some, some work on, on palliative care um, as well and the need to, of, of access to, to, to pain relief and having people die in, in dignity. So I, 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 I think that this um, just framing, framing NCDs as a, a human rights uh, issue is, is, is valuable for, for us as advocates. Thank, thank you, Christina, very much. Uh, and uh, we have still more questions pouring in, but we have already exceeded the time limit. So we now come to the end of this webinar. My heartfelt thanks to the union and to our panelists and to all our participants for enriching this webinar with their valuable inputs. Uh, the webinar recording will be made available to you, as always. And uh, I end up by wishing all of you a very happy Eid which we celebrated in India yesterday, but the festivities continue. And I hope that love and peace will prevail over hatred and war. Bye to everybody and have a good day. Well said, Madam G. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless.